Hello and welcome. Uh, I'd like to welcome you to uh, my first tutorial video on how to make the Monster Maze game. We're going to go through which sprites we need for some of the basic objects in the game. We're also going to talk about uh, the objects, the uh, room itself, and show you uh, how easy it is to quickly put, put together a maze game uh, to start with. And then in subsequent videos, we'll be adding a lot more features to make it even more fun. All right, so the first thing you should do is you uh, open up Game Maker and uh, give uh, your file a, a, a meaningful name. So we're going to save this and we're going to I'm going to put it uh, out here. So this will be Monster Maze. So Monster Maze, uh, I'll just call it Monster Maze 2 because I have a few different versions. Um, now I have a, a location where it's being saved. Uh, now I want to go up and add the sprite. So I go to the resources uh, menu and say create sprite. And our first sprite is going to be the person. Basically, th this is the, the character that the, uh, the player is going to control. So I'm going to call him person. And we're going to load that sprite. Uh, for me, that's out in my shared folder. So, uh, so I'm going to game design one. And then here, the Game Maker tutorial on maze games. And here's the sprites that are available. We want to use the ones that are for the maze platform. And I always like to turn on the tiles so that we can see uh, what we're looking at. And what I'm looking for is the person, or I'm not exactly sure what they call it, the Explorer sprite, I think. It's here. Explosion, Explorer, yeah. So we have this, this little expo explorer, explorer guy. And we want to use probably Explorer down, so it'll be facing you at least to start with. Uh, that looks nice. Now in this game, all the sprites uh, need to have these settings uh, made. First you have to shut off uh, precise collision checking, and then go into Modify Mask and make sure you say Full Image, because we want the collisions to, to happen if any of the boxes around the objects uh, would cross. So uh, say OK here. And then um, I also need a couple other sprites. Uh, another sprite I need is the, the wall sprite. So and again, we want to load that sprite. And it's near the end here. Lots of different types of walls. We're going to use that one. And say OK. Again, shut off precise collision checking set the bounding box to full image. And then finally, our last sprite, at least for today, is uh, we're going to create a goal. This is where the player is trying to get to. So we're going to call this goal. And we load the sprite. And there's a nice little exit sign here. So let's see if we can find it. Where's our sign? There it is, right there. That's a good one. So that's where the little explorer guy is going to try to get to. All right, uh, just like before, uh, we want to uh, shut off precise collision checking and also uh, say full image on the bounding box. You also might want to hide this. It gives you more screen space when you're working on the game. OK, so we have our sprites. And now we want to add the objects to our game. So let's try that. Um, the naming convention used in the tutorial is obj underscore, and then the, the thing you want to create. In this case, it's the person. This is the person object. It needs a sprite to show the person in the room. So we use the person sprite that we downloaded. And um, in, order, in order for the person not to animate, we don't want him to start out walking, because uh, he's, he's going to be stationary. So we're going to add a create event. Now, a create event gets called. Uh, when the person first gets created. So what we want to do there is we want to change the sprite and pretty much uh, stop the animation. We're really not changing the sprite. We're changing it to the same sprite, but we're s setting the animation speed to zero. So speed here means uh, um, animation speed. So if you set it to zero, it's not going to animate. And that's a good first start. Uh, I'm going to save that all these. Next, we need a, a wall object. So 
I'm right clicking on the folder here. It's another way you can do it. Right click, say create object. Here are our objects going to be the wall. And we'll choose the wall sprite. Now, <clears throat> one thing you have to remember about walls is that um, they're solid. So we have a solid wall. Anything we really need to do in here, not, not right now. And then finally, we need our exit object. So we'll create that. Okay, or actually we call it goal. So we want to we want to be consistent, I think, and we'll choose our goal sprite and say okay. So now that we have objects, we can actually put them in the room. Problem is we don't have a room, so let's make one. So you right click on rooms, say create room, and it gives you a kind of a gray background with the, all this grid stuff on it. Now, the sprites in our game are 32 by 32. And so we're going to set our grid the same dimensions so that it will make it really easy to create a, a room layout. Now, here on the Objects menu, once you have the room open, you can choose what you want to put in the room. Now, since this is a maze game and we don't want the person to really get out of the maze on this level, we want to put uh, walls all the way around the room. So you can do this by left clicking on the box, or if you want to do it more quickly, you hold down the shift key and then click and drag with the left, left button on the mouse. And then you're able to, if you get off course like there, you can just right click and they go away. So here's a good um, at least starting point for our level. Uh, we want to put uh, the person in the room, so maybe the person's over here. Well, actually, I'll, I'll put them out a little bit. And then we'll put the goal down in this corner. Okay. So the idea in the game, at least to begin with, is the person's trying to get to the exit. Once the person hits the exit, then it goes on to the next level. All right. Um, but right now, there's no way for the person to actually move. Uh, if we play the game now, it's just going to sit there. So we have to provide a means for the, for the person playing the game to take control of the, the player or the person here in the game. So we have to add some events, more events to the person. Now, the first thing we want to do is um, let's do the down key, because that's the way he's facing right now. So go, uh, go to the person, choose Add Event. That's right here and say uh, keyboard event. And we're going to go the down, the down arrow. That's what that one means. So when the player hits the down arrow on the keyboard, what we want to do is we want to move down. So we use our move down or uh, move fixed. And we're going to set the speed to 4 important that you set the speed to 4 because it needs to divide into 32, which is our grid size, evenly. If that doesn't occur, then, uh, then the player can sometimes uh, walk right through walls, and we don't want that. So choose the direction you want to go. This, this, this way is down. Uh, speed of 4. Don't click relative. And there's another thing we need to do before we uh, allow it to move in whatever direction we need to go. We have to make sure that the player is aligned with, grid, aligned with the grid before we start moving in a new direction. So if you go to the Control tab and grab this hexagon that has kind of the grid on it, what we're going to say is uh, we're going to wait until the player finishes uh, his previous move uh, before we move off in a new direction, and that could be down. So our grid size is 32, so we change the snap to 32. And then what we're saying here is if it's aligned with the grid, then let, it let the player move down. If the person object is not aligned with the grid, then we're going to skip that. We're going to wait till it lines up before we move down. And that way, you, you'll be able to move the player one square at a time. Um, so I'll, I'll do the other ones quickly. But uh, since this is a video, we, you can uh, pause it if you need to. Here's uh, the next one is up. And it's very similar. We grab this. We set the. We set the snap to 32, and if it's, if it's lined up, 
then that's when we move in our new direction. We should be up this time, speed of four. You can also copy and paste. So you right, select both of them and then say copy. And uh, for right, you can paste that in there. We just have to remember to change the direction if we do that. And then uh, left. Same thing, same two processes. Check to see if it's aligned. If it is, then instead of moving up, we're going to move left. Another uh, event we need to, do, to put in is called the no key event. And this is what happens when there isn't a key being pressed. And what we want to happen is we want the person object to stop moving. But again, we don't want it to stop moving until it's lined up with grid. So we're going to add one more keyboard event. Here's a no key event. In that case, uh, we wait for it to be aligned with grid. Once it is aligned, then we're going to stop moving. So we set that middle one. That means stop. And the speed is set to 0 because it's not moving. Okay, and that should allow us uh, to walk around in our game. So let me uh, start up the game, and I'll show you whether or not we have control of, of the person object. Okay, so here's our game. We have our little dude walking around. And we don't have any events, but we are moving one square at a time. You can see that as I just tap the keyboard here. But I can go outside the room, which is a problem. The other problem is I, nothing seems to happen when I touch the exit door. And what we want to happen is when we click on exit, it will take us on to the next room. So a couple things to do. All right, so how do we keep the uh, person object in the room? Well, we create a collision event with the wall. So when we hit a wall, we just want to stop moving. And it should be already lined up. If you set your um, bounding box and your precise collision check settings correctly, you can just stop because once it collides with the wall, it is already going to be lined up, lined up, so you don't have to ask that question. Okay, so now when we play the game, let's try it. We'll note that we can't go outside the room now. I'm trying to go left and it's not letting me. Okay. All right. So now we have to deal with the, the goal. Now, um, what we want to happen, we hit the goal with the person. We want to go to the next room. The problem is we only have one room. So I'm going to create another room here. And uh, before I do that, I do want to set a background for the room, because right now our, our room looks pretty blah. And we need something in the background to make it look kind of neat. So, so I say create background, and then load background. And there's backgrounds out here for us to use. Um, I think there's one here now. So if we go up one level, and here's... Uh, I'm going to find some backgrounds. Here they are. And uh, let's turn on tile so we can see what they look like. I was using this one, Earth. So why don't we do that? Say OK. And then it still doesn't have that background in our game. So when we go to the room, there's actually a tab called Backgrounds. So click on Room, and then go to Backgrounds and choose the background you want to use. In this case, it's the brown background. So you can see our little explorer exit sign. It looks a little bit more professional this way. OK, now we're ready to duplicate our room. So we say duplicate. And we want to change it around a little bit so we can tell, tell that this is a different level. So I might put, put some walls in here. Maybe put the goal up here. And maybe make a maze out of it. So. So I'm just drawing things randomly. But uh, you want to make your mazes kind of interesting. And there'll be challenges in each of the maze as we design it. Okay. Again, you can just do what you like here. We're going to put the uh, Explorer down here in the bottom left. And then 
I would imagine later on you put a few more things in here to make it interesting. Okay, so now we have a second room. Now that we have a second room, we can test the transition between the first room and the second room. Now to, to do that transition, we want to add a collision event to object person. So here we say add event, we're on person, right? We choose the person, we say collision with the goal. So not the wall, but the goal. And what, what do we want to happen uh, when we do that? Well, we'd like to go on to the next level. But say we're on the last level. We don't want to, the program will crash if you try to go to a level that doesn't exist. So you have to ask a question first before you go on. So, um, I think it's here on main one. Right here, the hexagon again is for asking a question. We check to see if there is a next room. So if the next room exists, then we want to go to the next room. That's here. Okay. So again, the hexagon means if this thing is true, do the next thing. If this is false, then skip over it. So we won't go to the next room if there's not a next room. You're on the last room. But for all others, uh, it'll advance you to the next room. So let's uh, give that a try in our game. Let's see if we got that working. All right, so here's our first room. Here's our little explorer. And we hit the exit sign, and now we're at the next room. Now we want to double check is when we hit the exit sign in the last room, it doesn't actually go anywhere, and it doesn't. I would imagine you might go to a completion screen or a bonus room or something like that. Or maybe a high score screen, one of those, those kind of things. All right, all right. so that's uh, pretty much it. Uh, we have a couple rooms. We have our first three objects created. They, are, they seem to be working correctly. Um, we did put the action for the exit sign for the goal. We got all our key presses done. So that's a good starter to our game. And the next video we'll cover um, uh, how to collect diamonds and how to open doors. Thanks.